Today we shall discuss our lecture about maternal health. The females in childbearing period, which is the period that elapses between ages of 15 up to 49 years, constitute about one fourth of the total population. This represents a big sector of the population. They are considered a vulnerable group, and this vulnerability is linked or connected with childbearing and its effect, including pregnancy, delivery, and their period. Particularly in developing countries, high morbidity and the mortality characterize this group. Most of this, their morbidity and the mortality are preventable or avoidable. Maternal health problems include two big categories, morbidity and the mortality. We shall discuss first morbidity, including malnourishment which is attributed to bad feeding of mother during the pregnancy, repeated successive pregnancy, in addition to the low socioeconomic level and absence of proper nutritional education. First, a common nutritional disorders include body weight disorder, including loss of weight and obesity. Loss of weight it is due to inadequate intake of routines and the calories, so proper feeding and the intake of adequate routines and the calories can prevent this disorder. Obesity due to overfeeding, especially food rich in calories as carbohydrates and the fats. We are knowing that the mother normally gains weight at a rate of one to two kg per month, starting from the fourth month of pregnancy. The second malnourishment disorder include anemia. Anemia is very, very important subject to be taken in consideration. Even if we try to know causes of anemia and how to prevent anemia. A nutritional anemia arise from deficiency of one or more of the essential nutrients, especially iron, vitamin B12, and the folic acid. Pregnant and lactating women are liable to develop deficiency with or without folic acid anemia which may be attributed to first, inadequate intake of iron, second, inadequate absorption of iron due to vitamin C deficiency and the excess dietary, dietary oxalates and the phosphates. Also, thirdly, chronic blood loss associated with chronic gynecological or obstetric condition. Lastly, poor availability of iron in, in predominant 
strictly vegetarian diet and accelerated iron loss due to parasitic infection. How to prevent even anemia? Or prevention of anemia. First, adequate supply of iron rich foods for pregnant and lactating women. Second, iron and the folic acid preparations which should, to which should be given in the second and the third trimesters of pregnancy and during lactation. Thirdly, nutritional education as regards iron requirement and the good source of iron. Lastly, health appraisal for detection and the management of anemia. The third malnourishment disorder is osteomalacia. Osteomalacia is nutritional deficiency disease that affects women due to inadequate intake of calcium and the vitamin. Such women are subjected to repeated pregnancy and lactation. Women with disorder complain of backache and generalize the bone ache and the pain. They are also suffering softening and rarefaction of bones and the deformities of pelvis and the long bones may occur in advanced cases. So, Prevention of osteomalacia depends upon adequate intake even of calcium and the milk products, vitamin D and the calcium supplementation if necessary. Lastly, family planning and adopting the discipline of spacing of pregnancies assist greatly. Purpural sepsis. What's meant by purpural sepsis? It's a very, very important subject in all in question. Purpural sepsis. By which is mean any infection in the, gen in the genital tract which occurs as a complication of abortion or delivery is termed purpural sepsis. The causative organisms include streptococcus pyogenes, anaerobic streptococci, staphylococcus aureus and the albus, and the Klebsiella pneumonia are the most often causative organisms. Sources of infection. We have three modes of transmission in such a disease. Cross infection, environmental infection, and the endogenous infection. Cross infection from personal attending delivery or abortion with sore throat or infected skin lesion. Secondly, environmental infection from the contaminated articles tenses and the surrounding environment by hands, flies, and the dust. Lastly, endogenous infection from the weak genital tract, from the weak genital flora or other septic fossae in the body. Moods of transmission of peripheral sepsis. First, cross infection. The causative organism is mainly Streptococcus pyogenes, which is transmitted, which is transferred from the attendance of abortion or delivery from their noses, throats, and skin lesions. 
Second, endogenous infection is caused mainly by anaerobic streptococci, which is the normal habitat of the vagina. Lastly, environmental infection it is caused mainly by Staphylococcus aureus and the albus and is transmitted by contact with infected articles and utensils. Very, very important to subject. Prevention for preventing the peripheral sepsis. We have to perform a sepsis during abortion, delivery, and perperion. Secondly, attendance of abortion or delivery must be free from any infection and septic fossil. Thirdly, achieving good sanitary environment for delivery. Lastly, good antenatal care for expectant mother aiming at early detection of any infection before delivery and the health education to motivate personal hygiene of the mother. The third hazard, according to the morbidity division, is a high-risk pregnancy. High-risk pregnancy is a major problem in developing a country. Why? Where well, health care services are limited in short. So, most of women who die or disabled due to events of pregnancy, delivery, and barbarian share some common features or characteristics. These common features or characteristics are usually caused risk factors. This is of high significance as identifying a high risk pregnancy. Early identification followed by treatment and the management of risk factors is essential to ameliorate short or long term security of these factors. It includes socioeconomic risk factors, demographic risk factors, medical risk factors, and obstetric risk factors. The second category of maternal disorder is the mortality. Previously, we discussed morbidity and we gave some stress even on iron deficiency anemia, osteomalacia, purpural sepsis, and the high risk pregnancy. The second division of maternal health problem is maternal mortality. Maternal mortality means the death of women while pregnant up to 40 days after termination of pregnancy irrespective to the duration of pregnancy resulting from any cause related to or aggravated by the pregnancy or its management. As an equation, equivalent number of maternal deaths due to causes related to pregnancy, delivery, and or perperium in certain year and the locality. Divided on number of live births in the same year and the locality, multiplied by 1,000.
What are causes of maternal mortality? Very, very important question in all exams. Causes of maternal mortality. Sometimes I mention enumerate direct causes of maternal mortality. Sometimes I mention indirect causes of maternal mortality. If we have to know direct obstetric causes and the indirect causes separate. Direct obstetric causes include those resulting from obstetric complication of the pregnant state. I mean pregnancy, labor, and the perbarium, and or from intervention. They include hemorrhage by all its varieties due to antipartum hemorrhage, so placental abruption or placenta brevia. Second, postpartum hemorrhage. Third, other types of hemorrhage. Fourth, peripheral sepsis. Fifth, hypertensive diseases of pregnancy with or without convulsions. Abortion, sixthly, abortion, whether spontaneous or induced. And there are other direct obstetric causes that include presence of ectopic pregnancy, ruptured uterus, anesthetic complications, cesarean section, obstructed labor, and the pulmonary embolism. The second group that cause indirect obstetric causes of maternal mortality are those resulting from previous existing diseases or diseases that can be aggravated by physiological effects of pregnancy. They include presence of severe anemia, Secondly, cardiovascular disorders. Thirdly, presence of neurological, neurological disorders as epilepsy, very important. Fourthly, infectious and parasitic diseases as bilharziasis. Also, urogenital diseases presence of neoplasm and the others endocrine null system disease. Thirdly, other causes, including incidental causes, say accident, homicide, burns, and suicide. Also, Avoidable contributing factors to maternal mortality, including poor quality of antenatal care. I mean that type of antenatal care that given the to a woman was not sufficient and the bad. Lastly, patient factors. Maternal health care services ما يؤدى من خدمات صحية في مراكز الأمومة والطفولة المنتشرة في المدن والقرى إذا نديس أرض السيرفيسز تدريكتت تو في ميلز during the child bearing period those who age from 15 to 49 years. In addition to infants, 
during the first year of life. And preschool children, those aged from one year to less than five years. However, the services form a single functional unit provided by MCH centers, by maternal child health centers, the in cities, in urban areas, and the combined units in rural areas. Objective of maternal child health services, even we are trying to lower the maternal and the child morbidity and the mortality rates. Side, we are giving birth to a healthy baby free from any complication and to ensure that every child will live and grow up in healthy surroundings. And the benefit adequate nourishment, health supervision, and the efficient medical care. Components of maternal health care service. Very, very important. Five words that may be given in a question about enumerate components of maternal health care service. They include, first one, premarital care. Second, antenatal care. Thirdly, natal care. Fourthly, postnatal care. Fifthly, interconceptional care. At the end of maternal health subject, two important informations must be given about vaccination during the pregnancy and the danger signs during the pregnancy. Both are very, very important. Vaccination during the pregnancy, we only give tetanus toxoid during the pregnancy. Tetanus toxoid is an activated toxin. A woman can be immunized during the child bearing period, whether pregnant or not. Suppose that women are pregnant, it is given in three doses, at least four weeks apart during the six or seven months of gestation, with the last dose at least two weeks before delivery. What is the value of tetanus toxoid? Tetanus toxoid prevents tetanus neonatorum of the neonatal infant. And at the same time, protect a mother who may be at extra risk of tetanus if delivery occurs under unhygienic conditions. Children born to immunize the mothers to tetanus are themselves immune for up to five months after birth. And women will be protected for about 10 years. We have to know that active immunization must be prevented during a pregnancy. The only one is, which is available to be used is tetanus toxoid to avoid hazards including congenital anomaly. The last important subject in the, the last important topic is danger signs during pregnancy. What are the signs 
of severity that indicate we are going to endanger pregnancy. First, the presence of vaginal bleeding. Also, presence of abnormal vaginal secretion. The presence of persistent vomiting. Presence of severe abdominal pain, severe continuous headache, blurring of vision, shells or fever, and the most important one of them is marked change in the frequency or intensity of fetal movement which is known as exaggerated fatal movement that indicate severity of the case. Thanks.